Hey guys, Fuse Box back on Rage Shadow Legends, having one of the best days I have had in probably two years. Absolutely have been going through a lot uh, behind the scenes. And I think we've got it fixed and coming home after all these treatments to something like this. So let's get into Ultimate Death Knight, right? What do I think about this? I think this is brilliant and fun. Let's start there. He's one of the clumsy, quirky characters that we've all kind of come to love. I mean, look at him. He's goofy, dropping his shield. Can't keep control of his little mouse. Nibbler's running around in his in his armor. He's a fun champion. He's become an icon, right? Kind of an icon for the game. Uh, very good artwork. Very cool looking champ. A lot going on here. And the kit actually has some decent stuff in it. Uh, the big question will be, is he worth building for wherever you are in the game? Let's try our best to figure that out together. But he's a good champion. Uh, that, that being said... Let's jump in, see where he fits the most. Now, I do like that he comes with regeneration set. If you are early game, that could be hard to get. Fire Knight is not easy while you're still progressing in the game. A regeneration set, if you get some good pieces with HP percentage, speed, maybe some defense under them, it's going to be an amazing set one way or the other. And if you're progressing, I will go ahead and say Ultimate Death Knight is going to help you out. He's an amazing champion. We've got kind of like this... Uh, Backup provoke on an A1. These are always good. He's got a decent chance on an A1, about 50% if it's not a legendary, to add this provoke. So Magma Dragon, things like that come to mind. Uh, Hydra Boss, you need a supplementary provoker. This is actually pretty handy to have. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of talk about Arena. Again, it's something that can control a nuker, keep them off of the rest of your team. Now, A2, this is kind of cool. Rats off to you. They, they worked really they worked really hard to make this a fun champion, and I, I am 100% sure that's what we're getting, a fun champion. So he attacks all enemies. That's good. He has a guaranteed chance to decrease attack. Now, that is actually amazingly solid for anywhere you are progressing in this game or slotting him in as your decrease attack champion, whether you've already progressed or not. That's a good move. It also has a 100% chance to fear legendary champions. If you've got the gear, you could make some pretty fun teams on arena with this guy and if you you're kind of progressing he's going to be amazing for you in arena because he kind of trying to hold your own a lot of people are in gold five that as things settle down in arena are going to find out maybe that's not their place but a champion like this could actually bolster their defense up keep them in their in their ranking so that they're still earning gold four gold five rewards trying to get their great haul up so we'll kind of go a little further into this but I do like the synergy against legendaries because Doom Tower waves are full of legendary heroes. Being able to control them as well as decrease the entire enemy team's attack is going to be solid. But then you come to a move that you can't argue against. A three-turn shield with a continuous heal? Yes, please. It's based on defense, which means you have control over how big this shield will be. All you need is a shield that's big enough with a continuous heal and your team's going to stay alive. This is just simply hard to argue against as as in any other shield champion a shield is a good ability a continuous heal is also a good ability so yeah progression he's going to be amazing uh all, this kit really works well with hydra all right i'm probably not gonna break any new teams if you've already done well on hydra but if you're still trying to build three good teams for hydra he could definitely slot into them because these passives actually are very interesting this is cool too awesome to die you can't come up with a better name than this but this is pretty solid all right so whenever an ally gets attacked he has a 100 percent chance unless it's a boss of they will take zero damage and he'll take that damage instead so it is basically sorry still on call basically he's gonna it's like the ultimate guardian set and already having some of those masteries like selfless defender built into his kit. He's going to protect somebody, take the damage for him. Look at his, let's look at his stats while we're talking about somebody that wants to protect your team. He's got 1400 defense, 20 K HP. This guy can be built tanky and protect the team. Now against bosses, the same thing, only it's a 50% chance of doing it which is actually pretty solid and it does not work on AOE abilities. This is basically you take him into, let's say again, that you're still building your arena teams for 3v3. You go in there and uh, you're dealing with a Rotos. You're dealing with a Mountain King who's going to one shot your Nuker or your Reviver. Well, he just, nope, Death Knight's going to take that hit. He's going to take that hit and he actually has the stats to take it. 
So when you're thinking about all this, well, let's go a little further. It increases his HP, his defense, and his speed by 10% for each dead ally. Now, there could be, with really good gear, some interesting synergies on trying to make this guy solo some stuff. He's not really a solo artist. Uh, but this will come into play uh, for progression. This will come into play if you can keep your reviver alive, which he will help do through his other passive. He can really ramp up everything that he's doing to protect your team until you get those dead allies back up and running. So this is going to be great for progression. This is a huge defensive aura for all battles. It's going to come in handy if you're progressing. And then back to if you're not progressing, you could make a really fun, I don't know if you're like me, in arena, you get up right around platinum and you throw in these silly defenses. They're they're beatable, but they're just kind of nasty, you know, like uh, trying to control control your your win loss ratio and you just throw in some of these uh well, i guess it'd be easier just go to a battle log and look like like this the i think i call this squid games you know i've got some just nasty tanky teams they can be beaten but they can also wear down teams just like this and beat them and he could actually become a very fun defensive unit for some of these teams and in some cases if you're still pushing through the game he could become your defensive unit on your defensive team. Uh, I, I have a feeling that Arena will start to level back out into normalcy. And when that happens, people are going to find they may be up a little higher than where they really should be. And, and heroes like him could help keep you in that zone because we do want everybody farming, getting their, uh, their gold bars and getting their great haul points so they can get this up. So that's definitely where he's going to be useful. If you're climbing, he's going to be useful. If you're already at the top, he's going to be absolutely fun. But all in all, my take on him is it is a brilliant PR move. He's a fun champion. He's quirky. He's kind of iconic to the game. Honestly, I just think there's no reason to complain. Everyone's going to get a regeneration set. What would I gear this guy in? If you're going to need him or use him in PvP, then you're probably looking at a bolster set or a stone skin set because he's going to protect that team so well. And if you have the team to get the job done in a couple of rounds, a stone skin set will absolutely get you through those couple of rounds. If not, then a bolster set is going to do the same thing, protect you for a few rounds while he's protecting your team and then heal him afterwards. Anywhere else, bolster is probably my number one go-to for this guy. Uh, it's just better than the regeneration set. Regeneration would be the obvious next second since it does the same thing. He needs to heal up. He's going to take damage for other heroes. He needs to heal up. You're looking at high defense, high HP so that he's healing for more and probably speed just to get around to all those abilities. I would probably get him around 230, 250 accuracy if possible because he does have some pretty neat. The fears are pretty handy. Uh, I, I don't think I would go crazy on accuracy trying to land every one of my provokes or fears, but he's one of those heroes that you definitely want to get those off. They can be clutch at the right moment, especially like on Hydra. Making sure you got just enough accuracy to land that provoke every now and then could be the perfect supplement to the team you're already using. But in the end, I think it's just a brilliant champion, a fun champion to have. Whether you want to build him out right now, take him to 550 just so you can play with him, whatever it is you want to do. Let me know what you think about him. He's not going to change the game. I, I, in my opinion, he won't change the game for anybody. Unless you're progressing. Pretty amazing champion. But I think it's a brilliant move to give us something fun to play with. And because he looks fun to play with, we will play with him. And we just might find out that there are some amazing things he could do. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, I bet I could talk you into getting him. He's free. I've got to get this. Until next time, enjoy the grind.